factors that sometimes come up when we're around extended family that we can't control and that um, are just made by other people's poor choices. And um, how do we build those boundaries to make safe spaces yet at the same time show those people that we do love them? Yeah. So that was a lot. I like yeah. it. <laughs> <It's a lot. laughs> Dig out whatever you want. I guess that's a so, lot. You know, so, the, so the drinking thing, um, I want to say, first of all, your that was your friend or the other person that you were talking about. That's a great boundary. She's already, you know, they're going to the events and she's leaving early. That's a great boundary. Right. Um, and, you know, she may or may not, depending on the child's age and the appropriateness of the situation, um, you know, have a, start having conversations about, you know, this is just a boundary. Um, another idea is to potentially offer to host the event at her home and do it during the day or in the morning and have a, you know, like a brunch. Um, those are just sort of some, you know, sort of tactical things. Um, now your friend who said it's just out of control, that, that was just kind of the drinking conversation. Your friend that said it's just out of control and she's just not even sure how to move forward. Um, do you have any examples around that? Um, that you're able to share? Let's see. Um, more so just that when family gets together because they're all from out of town, it's all these things are scheduled, you know, one after the other. And she said, my adrenals can't keep up. I just, I have to go and rest. And I have to, to say, I can't make it to that particular outing. And it's almost assumed that everyone is going to do everything together because they have this short period of time together. Yeah, I love that. I love okay. that. And I love that she's taking a break. And what I'm wondering and I'm curious about is like, what are the agreements that have been made? It sounds like there's an assumed agreement. And exactly. And I think a yeah. lot of family relationships are assumed agreements that we we don't even realize we've mentally made. They're unconscious agreements, right? Mm -hmm. And she's starting to make the agreements for herself, but it sounds like there's some ambiguity in the space about maybe she feels like she's being judged or, you know, the, uh, the rest of the group isn't right. sure, or maybe mm -hmm. she's making up a story that, that they're upset with her because she's not there. And, mm -hmm. you know, so again, stop, handle her stuff. Is she feeling guilty? Is she feeling upset? Is she making up stories about them? Process, mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm take a breath, own her impact, you know, process, you know, please process your stuff. Now I can come at it clean. Okay, 35 people who are all coming together for this week. What's our, what's our, what value are we honoring? What's important here for all of us to get together? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's to connect and relax and have fun. Great. Does everybody feel relaxed doing 97 things over the course of three days? Exactly. Perfect. That's great for you guys. That's not the value. I that's I don't. Mm -hmm. I already said the value is to connect and relax and have fun. That's not what works for me. So I'm going to take a stand for myself. And often what happens when I take a stand for myself and boundaries is that then other people are like, wait, what? I can do yeah. that too? Hold on a second. Great. That's real leadership. Mm -hmm. That's clean. I'm coming at it clean. I'm not judging you. I'm not making up a story about this whole system. I'm checking with myself and, and handling me and then making a container, right? I'm getting clear about what the container looks like and building from there. Well, and I think a lot of times as we grow up, you know, those family assumptions are things we take from our childhood that our parents mm -hmm. may have built in out of guilt or um, just, you know, you have to do this because we're going to grandma and grandpa's and, you know, you have to, you know, clean your plate or whatever, whatever the family rules are. And then you carry those into adulthood and you don't even realize you're doing it. And then you share it with your own children without, you know, any thought. And um, it, I, I love that, you know, just that you, you can, you can stop that um, by just being real and being open. And, and then other people in your family can see that and go, Oh, you know, your siblings may be going through the same thing and not realize they have a choice as well. 
and my kids too. Yeah. And here's the thing, because our kids are watching us. Okay. And I don't know if your friend has kids or not. And probably most of your viewers do have children, right? They're getting it on some level. And most yeah. of us, most of us can work on our boundaries. Most adults I work with, they have a challenge with boundaries. Somewhere mm. in their life, they have a challenge with boundaries. They may be conscious of it or not conscious of it, mm -hmm. right? So there's an opportunity to have a conversation with the kids and say, you know, there are 97 things going on this weekend. You know, our value we've already decided is relax and have fun. So we're picking 17 of those things. And, you know, here's, and here's why. Because I want to have boundaries and I want you to have boundaries. Good fences are what makes good relationships. When we don't have good fences, we don't have good neighbors because we can't keep, you know, the people out that, you know, the stuff out that we don't want. And then they don't know when they can come in or not come in. To use the metaphor of an actual fence, right? Boundaries are like fences.